Welcome everyone to the launch of the Posey 3D Studios YouTube channel. In this video, I'm printing and painting this awesome Sandman from the sponsor of this video, Epic Prop. Go check him out on his Patreon. He is planning to release the entire Sinister Six cast, all of which I'll be making right here on this channel. So I started printing the base, it's an FDM because of the size. It's a quarter scale, so these are really large models and will take a little while. The next day. As you can see, to get completely printed. As with all 3D prints, they just take a little time. A few inches later. Some things take a little more time. Now that the base is finished printing, I take it outside, get it cleaned up, put a little primer on it. Then go back inside to cure all the resin pieces. And then I take to the airbrush to do the priming on the smaller pieces the accessories on the base. While I was doing these I noticed that the ends were kind of capped off and so I decided I'm going to drill these out which is really not a great idea. Don't don't do this. Use your slicer. Make a hole in the part if you want these hollow. That's what I did with the other piece and it was much more safely done. I took some PVA glue, mix it with water, and spread it out with a brush all over the base. Just be careful not to get it in the keyholes, that can cause problems later when you start trying to plug the accessories into it. I felt that putting real sand on this would just give it a you know more realistic feel and allow me to blend things in a little better than just trying to use paint or putty, mainly because I'm not very good at either of those. To contain the sand and not make such a big mess, I used this little bucket and I covered my desk. But guys, this stuff gets everywhere. Don't do this inside your house. I'm putting on the base coat for all the metal pieces coming off the base. I used this Apple Barrel Barn Red that I found at Hobby Lobby. And also used some Army Painter Dry Rust to give it a rusted feel. I put it on with a q-tip instead of a brush just to kind of give it a little bit of uh, a little more texture i didn't want to just brush it on even though it ended up going everywhere it turned out to be okay it still came out with a little more texture than i would have gotten with just brushing it on once i got a rust color everywhere I uh, went over everything with a brush using Army Painter Soft Tone Wash and that wasn't quite dark enough for me so I also went over it with a dark tone wash off camera because someone forgot to press record. After the wash dried I grabbed some Army Painter Shining Silver and a popsicle stick to apply some damage texturing to all the little metal pipes and accessories that go and attach to the base. I'll probably end up going a little overboard on this particular piece, mainly because I just got a little carried away with the, with the paint. But the th thought process on this was it's inside this big, huge living rock tumbler, roaming around the city, chasing this guy in spandex, and just churning sand and slinging it everywhere. So these pipes, have, they're not going to be all just rusted and poking out. They've been through the, the tumbler that is Sandman. So they're going to have shiny parts, and it's going to be shiny all over the place because it's rubbing up against all these other pieces and, and other shrapnel that's picked up along his way through the city. And here they're all side by side. As you can see, I didn't go as heavy on the first one, which is good because you want some differences in there. You don't want them to be identical. Moving on to the body, I give the legs a Zenithal highlight over a black primer before going with a light oak brown from Army Painter as a base coat. After it dried, I followed up by highlighting using Vallejo Model Air Mud Brown. I don't remember if I used a wash on this or not, so let's say that I didn't or that 
the camera guy just forgot to hit record when I did that. I painted the torso and glued it to the legs before deciding I didn't like the colors that I used. It was just too dark. So I reprimed, re and started off with an Army Painter green skin as my base coat this time. This gave me a lot brighter base coat to start with, which turned out better in the end. After the base coat dried, I released the Army Painter Kraken skin for the highlights. Then I sprayed some Army Painter Angel Green from underneath and used this to fill in the shadows and in the creases. So while I was painting this, my airbrush ran out of paint and I had to set the model down for a second to put some more paint in it and this happened. Almost a tragedy there. Went for my cat-like reflexes, I would have lost it. With the model saved, I dried it off with a hair dryer, put on a matte varnish, dried that off with a hair dryer, and then started painting the lines with uh, Vallejo Olive Green. Even though I was putting on a darker color, it took about three coats to get everything as even as I wanted it to and to get it fully covered up. I thought about using liquid mask or tape to mask off the areas before painting, but decided I'd just do it by hand. Besides, the hobby is painting, and this is what I do to, you know, just do something to relax and just chill and do my thing, put on some music and rock on. Like a famous painter always said on his TV show, this is your world. You make it however you want. There isn't a right way or wrong way to paint. There is, however, an easy way and a hard way for some things. To learn the differences and to get better, I found myself in a nice group of folks that have a little bit more experience than me. Some have less, but everyone can be learned from no matter what their skill level and it's benefited me greatly to be around some of these people that know what they're doing and the most important part of that is that these people are willing to share their knowledge with you so that you can get better speaking of which i want to thank my discord friends over at the artist den especially dead paul who's not really dead see no evil useman valentine and tim if it wasn't for these guys and gals, I uh, probably wouldn't have made this video. So if you don't like the video, please leave a comment below of which one of those I should blame the most. I got the torso all painted up, set it over on the side to dry, grabbed a cup of dirt, some glue, some water, and a brush. Started painting the head. Uh, used a Q-tip so it wouldn't be all pulled up in those areas. And then the fun part, I just gave him a big old face plant right in the cup. Of course, this didn't cover near what I had expected it to, so I had to use a little cup, pour sand all over it. If I haven't said so before, sand just gets everywhere, but it's still fun to play in. I repeated the process for both arms, get them all nice and glued up and all sandy. I set those out to dry overnight and the next day I started painting the hair using Vallejo's Model Air Mud Brown. Once I was done with his hair, I grabbed some Army Painter Mummy Robes to paint his teeth and his eyes. It's really all I needed. I wasn't going to try to paint pupils over sand just because it would never ever ever work out. But I did make sure to get his eyes covered as best I could. After the base and everything had dried, I took it outside and put a clear coat over all of it. This darkened the sand all over, which was kind of unexpected, even though I should have known that wet water turns muddy brown. 
I wasn't crazy about the color change, but that's okay because toward the end of the video I ended up spray painting the sand anyway just to blend all the pieces in so that it was all had a nice even tone. I started gluing on all the base accessories and I just want to say Epic Prop did a fantastic job of keying these things. Everything just fit. There was no having to cut or finagle any of these pieces in. They just popped right in, even with the sand kind of in the way where it wasn't supposed to have sand. So if you make one of these with sand, just be careful around the keys. I also like to bring up that he didn't really go overboard with this base like most artists do. This is very simple. It's not overly complex. And it just fits, you know, sometimes simpler is the best way to now it's time for more sand to fill in the gaps that I made by putting sand on the base. Otherwise you just have little gaps that are on pretty much every model left to fill in. I think it worked really well in adding some texture and some life to these parts that you just couldn't do with paint alone. There's no way you could paint this to look like there's sand on top of it without actually having something physically there to be the sand and even then who wants to spend that much time trying to make it look like sand where you can just put sand on it and be done with it once the base dried from all the sanding I glued the body onto it and you'll never guess what I did next that's right more glue and more sand put it where the body meets the base just to smooth out that transition and make it look more natural. Once that dried, I wised up, took this guy out to the garage, glued on his head and his arms, and the spike ball. It comes with a hammer as well as the spike ball. Uh, I thought about using magnets to be able to swap them, but then decided against it. You can use either one. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I mean, I'm not your dad. Back inside with the airbrush, I mixed up some mummy robes with elven flesh just to blend the sand back together from all the varnishing and the new sand. I also blended in some sand up his back and around where his t-shirt met with his arms off camera, mainly because I didn't hit record when I was doing that. And with the highlighting done, it's time for glamour shots. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, make a comment, eat cookies in bed, all that fun stuff. As a special thanks for staying until the end, all new subscribers to the channel get a 15% discount code to purchase this model from the Epic Prop Gumroad store. Also a special thanks to my Patreon supporters whose names are scrolling on the screen now. Oh wait, I don't have those. Thanks for watching. <laughs>